Welcome to the Why Wonder channel, where we explore the wonders of the world around us and the questions that prompt us to seek answers. Today, we will embark on a fascinating journey to understand why there are so many different religions in the world. From ancient times to the present day, humanity has been guided by an impressive diversity of beliefs, rituals, and spiritual traditions. But what drives us to embrace these different worldviews? What explains the richness and complexity of the religions that permeate our history and culture? Let's dive into this intriguing topic and unravel the mysteries behind humanity's religious plurality. Get ready for a journey of discovery and reflection. It is virtually impossible to measure the number of religions in the world. Currently, the religions with the most adherents in the world's population are Christianity, 28%, Islam, 22%, Hinduism, 15%, and Buddhism, 8.5%. Judaism reaches approximately 16 million people. Spiritism, although not considered a religion, has about 18 million adherents. Like these religious movements, most religions in the world are still subdivided into segmented groups, parties, and denominations with doctrinal and practical differences. In addition, there are smaller religions and sects, practiced by specific ethnicities, such as indigenous groups, aborigines, and tribes from the interior of Africa who have their belief system. Many of these religious movements are monotheistic, such as Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, which share the worship of the same God, the God of Abraham, but with marked doctrinal differences between them. Other monotheistic groups such as Sikhism believe that truth is not limited to a single belief. On the other hand, there are polytheistic religions, which adopt a group of deities in which each one is the patron of one or more forces of nature. Many of these polytheistic religions resort to the occult, animism, and ancestor worship, among other spiritualist beliefs attributed to their gods. Other religions, such as Hinduism, believe that there is a divine life force that permeates all the elements of nature, with the power to transform everything that exists into a potential god. Other beliefs claim that living beings, especially humans, are bound to the physical world and go through a spiritual pilgrimage in search of a higher sphere of existence, such as enlightenment, eternity, or the ultimate good. This pilgrimage depends on the intrinsic spiritual force of the human being, which can last for eons of reincarnation. Many of these religions have great influence over society, politics, and government. These influences are expressed in the caste division, as in India, or in the civil, social, and political spheres, as in Italy, the Vatican, and Turkey. Other nations adopt an official national religion that dictates their legislature, such as the United Arab Emirates. In many countries where religion is official or exerts social and political influence, there are persecutions and fierce conflicts with other religious groups. There are also many people who do not profess any religion, 14.3% of the world's population. This group can be segmented into people who respect religiosity, but do not position themselves in any belief, anti-religious people and groups hostile to any religion. Atheism corresponds to almost 4% and confesses that there is no divinity of any kind. Why are there so many religions? This is a vital question for defining human identity. This article is not an anthropological or philosophical study of human religiosity, but a reflection that is based on the Bible, adopting the following premises. 1. The God of the Bible is the one true God. 2. The Bible, in its entirety, is God's revelation to humanity. 3. God is the creator of the universe, and he made the heavens and the earth in six literal days. 4. The human being was created in the image and likeness of God but 5. It currently lives outside the divine patterns of creation by virtue of sin. Descriptive anthropology assumes that every kind of religion is created by the human community that prostrates itself before it in an attitude of projection. Projection is a defense mechanism in which personal attributes, unwanted thoughts, psychological trauma, expectations of the future, and emotions are attributed to another individual, group, or reality, such as a trauma from the past. In the case of religion, the human being projects all this onto one or more deities, supernatural force, spiritual entity, cult, or ritual, to explain its existence, its complexes, and perspectives. In other words, human beings create their own gods, 
cults, and rituals to justify their way of life. While this description is plausible, it is not true, nor is it applicable to every religious movement. But there is a factor to consider. This statement proves that most human beings have an inherent tendency towards religiosity. Every human being has the need to believe in, worship, and serve someone greater than himself. Even atheists worship reason and knowledge of the universe as something greater than themselves. Now, if the universe were the result of a merely evolutionary process absent of any supernatural or divine power that would guide it, this natural tendency that shapes cultures would not be part of the human being. So, if we have the tendency to worship, it is logical to understand that we were somehow designed by a higher being. Biblical religion, and we are not talking about a specific Christian group or denomination, but those who believe in the Bible as God's revelation, believes that human beings were created by God on the sixth day of creation. Therefore God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them, Genesis 1 verse 27. This explains human religiosity. The human being created by God turns to the one who is the pattern of his image. God has made everything beautiful in its due time. He has also put eternity in the heart of man, without his being able to discover the works which God has done from the beginning to the end. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. On earth, all of creation was aesthetically perfect and pleasing to the senses. God has gifted man with the sense of eternity, that we belong to something greater in the dimension of time and space. This consciousness of the infinite generated a feeling of connection between the creator and the creature. In Eden, the sense of eternity was perfectly filled by God, satisfied in the adoration of his loving character and in the recognition that he is the gift of life. When Adam and Eve, deceived by Satan, sought the impossible of being like the Creator, Genesis 3 verses 1 to 6, see Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14, believing that they could be their own gods, they forsook the true and only God. This disconnection from infinity makes us feel small, preoccupied with the future we don't know, and dissatisfied with the transient and limited things of our sinful life. This disconnect has led to a relentless search for what we have lost. The void needed to be filled again, and Satan took advantage of this to distort the concept of worship. As generations passed, before and after the flood, humans sought to satisfy this need in the pursuit of power, prosperity, and the worship of imaginary gods, graven images, or themselves, Exodus 20 verses 3 to 6. As a result, humanity has plunged into the worst stages of violence, perversion, corruption, and degradation. Today. Even if they are unaware or skeptical about God, we all feel the need for security regarding infinity in the space-time dimension. We are a race of nearly 8 billion people living in a tiny speck of cosmic dust, fully exposed to the power of the forces of the universe. How can we know if the sun won't fry us in the heat of a supernova, if the moon will crash into Earth, or if some asteroid will cause a mass extinction? How do we know if we're going to have an accident on the way home, or contract a fatal disease? We are so small in the face of the immensity. Carl Sagan, an atheist cosmologist, said that immensity is tolerable only through love. But, John said that God is love, 1 John 4 verse 8. For this reason, human beings can only find true security and meaning in life by returning to their ancient origins. The Greek term for sin is hamartia, which means to miss the mark, as when an archer missed the mark by shooting his arrow. The hamartia or sin occurs when a human being prostrates himself before the satisfaction of his sinful desires, when he places them above the loving will of God. Every time we sin, we miss the mark, for we are worshipping ourselves. This explains why there are so many religions. In this context, Anthropologists of religion are right in asserting that religious phenomena are created by the human community that prostrates itself before them as a mechanism of projection. Man in need of satisfying his sinful aspirations prostrates himself before fabricated gods and offers them worship. An important point that this article wants to make is that most members of these religious groups promote the practice of good works, social welfare, and assistance to those in need. This is happening all over the world. We must admit that many of the principles and values of the world's great religions closely resemble those of the Bible, and that is commendable. 
This shows that even as sinners, we feel an inherent need for good, even if we are unable to do it. Truly, there are many people who do not believe in God, who should serve as an example to many who profess to be Christians. This article is not intended to criticize anyone's sincere faith, but it is a mistake to believe the proverb that all roads lead to God. Proverbs 16 verse 25 says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. A distinctive feature of the religion of the Bible, and we are not talking about Judaism or any Christian denomination, is the way God and the human being are portrayed. In most religions around the world, the human being is on a path and must seek and do good, or wage war for its cause, in order to evolve to a higher sphere. Their gods are often portrayed as beings who have evolved into the spirit world, impersonal energies, or capricious and often cruel pre-existing deities who need to have their appetite satisfied through offerings or great sacrifices. This is also the reason for many conflicts and terrorist acts in the world. But the Bible portrays an entirely different God. He is one, all-powerful, creator of all things, and giver of life, holder of all authority in the universe, and worthy of worship. But God is also love, and he loves human beings to the point of dying to save them from their irreversible condition of sin. He also commands us to love those who think differently from us. Hence, John 3 verse 16 sums up God's work on behalf of fallen mankind, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. While many religions in the world, including Christian religions, advocate that human beings need good works to attain salvation, the religion of the Bible advocates that the only one who can save man and raise him to a higher level of existence is God. Jesus, God's personal revelation to man, made it clear in Matthew 7 verse 13 and 14 that there are only two kinds of paths enter ye through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many that enter through it, for narrow is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few are those who agree with it. Therefore, only one way leads to God, and that way is Jesus Christ, John 14 verse 6. Therefore, we should resort to its study to know God and worship Him. First of all, know that no prophecy of Scripture comes from personal interpretation, for prophecy never originated in the will of man, but men spoke from God, moved by the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1 verses 19 to 21. The Bible says that there will be many people in eternity who have never had any idea who God is or have even received a totally distorted view of Him. These people will have the privilege of meeting you face to face and learning of your love in eternity. But Jesus tells us, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. The Lord requires the true Christian to speak firmly and lovingly to every person about God's plan to save us and restore us to the purpose of existence He has envisioned for us. If we love God, we must preach the word in season and out of season, 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, taking every opportunity to present the Savior to the world. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of the origins and diversity of religions in the world. Don't forget to leave your comments and suggestions below. In the next video, we'll continue our journey of discovery, diving into another fascinating topic. Stay tuned and see you there.